Dear Rebel Lord, Sisters and Brothers, once again Father is here greeting you all in the name of Jesus. We are on 306th day of our Bible pilgrimage. We start with uh, reflections on 44th chapter of uh, Sirach. In fact, this chapter is the beginning of a new section in this book, having uh, praised the wonderful works of God in the nature or in the created universe that reveals God's glory. Now, uh, Sirach meditates on the chosen fathers, the godly men, the ancestors of our uh, past generations, through whom God's glory was manifested in the history. So beginning with Enoch, who pleased the Lord and was taken up to heaven without death. It goes all the way up to Simon the high priest, who was the contemporary of uh, uh, Sirach, and ends the book with the personal reflections. Uh, in chapter 50, we see that with a thanksgiving song in the last chapter, 51. So, almost seven chapters are dealing with the divine glory manifested in the history through the chosen ones of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, today, we begin a new book, that is the book of uh, Lamentations. While the author of the Lamentations remain nameless within the book, strong evidence from both inside and uh, outside the text points to prophet Jeremiah as the author. Both Jewish and Christian tradition ascribe the authorship to prophet Jeremiah. And uh, when Saint Jerome translated the Bible into Latin, he added a note stating Jeremiah as the author of uh, the book of Lamentations. The original name of the book in Hebrew, Eka, which can be translated as How. So, this is a book of How, giving a sense of weeping or lamenting over some sad event. Later, translators substituted uh, in the title Lamentations because of its clearer and more evocative meaning. In fact, Jeremiah was a prophet of Lamentations. Not only does the author of the book witness the results of the recent uh, uh, destruction of Jerusalem, he seems to have witnessed the invasion itself. In chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, very clearly tells that author was present during invasion. Actually, Jeremiah was present for both the events. Historically, it was true, it was confirmed. Here, the city in question is none other than Jerusalem. And uh, uh, we find Jeremiah walking through the streets during these uh, chapters, five chapters of five beautiful poems. So here he is walking through the streets and alleys of the holy city and he sees nothing but pain, suffering and destruction in the wake of uh, Jerusalem being invaded by uh, uh, Babylon. That was in 586 BC. So it also makes sense to date the book as close to the invasion as possible, meaning either late 586 BC or early 585 BC. Why? Because of the raw emotion uh, Jeremiah expresses throughout its pages. 
praise the lord this book is of great spiritual importance because like the book of job the lamentations pictures a man of god puzzling over the consequences of sin and evil in the world especially when he is beset with excruciating pain and sufferings but the difference between job and the lamentations is job dealt with some unexplainable evil all of a sudden but whereas jeremiah is lamenting over a tragedy is entirely of jerusalem's making even in spite of persistent warnings from the lord but the most beautiful thing about the book is something else that is at the heart of this book at the center exact center of this book the center of the lament over the effects of sin and the world there is a declaration a strong declaration of god's love a beautiful statement of hope in the lord and a proclamation of faith that is chapter 3 verses 22 to 26 that is almost exactly the center of this book i caught the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness the lord is my portion says the lord therefore i will hope in him the lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul that seeks him it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the lord it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the lord hallelujah so at the center of this book then we have a beautiful declaration of god's faith uh, you know a faith in god and uh, his love for us and a soul's trust in the lord makes this book something very precious so the main thing is not mere lamentation or hopelessness but the main thing is proclamation of god's love amidst darkness and suffering so these verses of faith hope and love in the midst of darkness shine as a beacon to all those uh, who are suffering under the consequences of their own sin and uh, disobedience so the picture uh, that the author draws explaining the situation of jerusalem is very very grim that we can see in the chapters like children begging for food from their mothers chapter 2 verse 12 and young men and women cut down by swords chapter 2 verse 21 and the compassionate formerly compassionate mothers using their own children for food cooking their children you know it's very very sad picture that is chapter 4 verse 10 so even the city's roads are mourning over its condition chapter 1 verse 4 so the pain so evident in jeremiah's reaction to this devastation clearly communicates the significance of the terrible condition in jerusalem but from this book these five chapters of this book of lamentations in fact it is five poems well constructed poems from this mainly seven points come out we can say a uh, seven messages the first is this book helps us to see a destroyed city and a destroyed temple of god in our own lives it can help us when we look inside do you see the city of god and the temple of god destroyed or being destroyed in ourselves second thing so this book helps us or reminds us the importance of mourning over our own sins 
to repent over our sins to shed tears over our sins the third thing is it tells us about asking the lord for his forgiveness when we fail him the importance of asking pardon from the lord with the true repentance the fourth thing is it clearly pictures the gravity of the consequences of disobedience to the will of god what sin can do in our lives what disobedience can do to us that is the fourth uh, message the fifth message is the book of lamentation teaches that the most beautiful thing is not to lose hope amidst our difficulties amidst the most gruesome tragedies of life the importance of keeping faith hope and love in the heart even while sufferings beset us that's how the center of the book is the proclamation of faith hope and love that is the fifth message and the sixth message is this book proclaims the fact that to turn to the lord also we need his help that is why the second last verse of the book chapter 5 verse 21 bring us back to you lord bring us back bring us back to you o lord bring us back so that we may come back restore our ancient glory or another translation is restore us to thyself o lord that we may be restored renew our days as of old chapter 5 verse 21 beautiful thing then the seventh and the last message from this book is the acrostic composition of the carefully constructed five poems of this book you know acrostic uh, construction meaning in the first chapter second chapter third chapter and fourth chapter every line begins with uh, the first letter of the hebrew alphabets you know alphabet 22 uh, um, letters are there in the hebrew alphabet so the first chapter has 22 words second chapter has 22 verses and third chapter has 66 verses that is every first second and third verses starting with uh, uh, one letter of the alphabet and next, fourth fifth and sixth verses starts with uh, the second alphabet like that it is every three verses starting with the uh, on alphabet it's in hebrew okay but when it is put in english and so on it, it it takes different things but originally it is composed with a such a great rhythm so what is the meaning and message it proclaims a message that even if our life sometimes seems to be chaotic and uh, senseless and uh, no meaning as such meaningless sometimes but at the root of everything there is an order at the root of everything there is a rhythm that is the spirit of god or the 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 wisdom of god working that is the most beautiful thing this chapter or this book gives to us praise the lord at last just one verse from the gospel of luke chapter 2 uh, verse 51 and he went down with them and came to nazareth and was obedient to them and his mother kept all these things in her heart uh, george leo haydock the famous bible scholar he comments on this verse i quote him he was subject to them astonishing humility which the son of god was pleased to teach by his example as also obedience to parents saint luke relates nothing of our savior from the age of 12 till the age of 30 except that he was obedient to saint joseph 
and the Blessed Virgin. The Divine Spirit showing by this that nothing is so great and amiable in Christians as ready obedience to the directions of their superiors. All children are hereby taught what subjection and obedience is due from them to their parents. That is George Leo Hedo. Praise the Lord. My Almighty God bless you, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit.